Hello, Frank. Hey, what up, man? How's it going? Good. Uh, Frank Castillo from the Comedy Store. Yeah. Welcome to the Isaac Abrams Show. Uh, I did a little digging. Oh, okay. And it turns, do you know what your last name means? Uh, Castle, Frank Castle, kind of like the Punisher. Yes, uh, kind of like the Punisher. And it's, uh, this says, Castillo's surname often denoted uh, someone who lived at or near a large fortified building or worker in a castle derived from Castillo, Latin Castellum. Mm -hmm. But I think Castillo sounds Italian. Hilarious. So I want to talk to you about being the boss of your own crime family mm -hmm. and your rise to power. Oh, okay. And I can blur your face out and change your voice oh, okay. if you <laughs> if yeah, you yeah. want. But Please do. Yeah, be, that's hilarious. Being the boss of a crime family, uh -huh. uh, how long did it take for your crime family money to bleed into your comedy career? Oh, it uh, took, you know, not too long. It was actually almost immediate because the thing about like being a funny person around criminals is like every criminal loves a funny person. It's true. So now it's like whenever I do shows, they all just show up and it's a nice little... It's a nice little break, you know? It's kind of a cool little, like, uh, neutral ground is, like, all my comedy shows. You know what I mean? No one's getting yeah. killed. We're all just having fun. But uh, when people say, ah, Frank killed last night, do do people have to quantify that? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they're oh, just, who? like, on stage or, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, that's funny. Got it. Uh, so I won't disrespect you in any way no, 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 on no, this no. show because I don't want one of your capos to come in here. Oh, of course start, not. Yeah. Start spraying down. Uh, before we get too into it, let's promote everything you got going. You got a podcast? Yes, I got a podcast called Peaked. Uh, it's on Peaked TV on Instagram and uh, Peaked on YouTube. P-E-A-K-D. Uh, right. We, it's like me and my, punked. Yeah, kind of like punked, but yeah. uh, with a peaked. Uh, me and my boy uh, this is my co-host, J.P. Noto. We uh, just... Have guests on, and we cover uh, a lot of weed stuff and rosin. Yep. Uh, we're big stoners, um, but yep. we just wanted to make like a show that was like the sesh at the back of the comedy store. Yeah, because that's where we would always hang out. Like before all my sets, I just get stoned in the back, sure. which is like the secret area everyone gets to hang out and get. Yeah, does all the fun drugs. Yeah, I've never been back there. You've never been back there. I've had an opportunity to go see it, and then I got tied or pulled away, and it was just oh like, yeah, because yeah. I'm friends with Emily. Yeah, yeah. So Emily is the booker at the comedy store mm -hmm. for those if it's too inside baseball, but I'm sure. If you're listening to this show, you know about comedy. Of course. Um, and then you have an album out. Yes, I do. Lupe. Lupe. This is my, my grandmother's name. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very funny album. I just listened to it today. Oh, thank you. To prepare for this. Um, the story about your sister graduating, we don't have to burn it Oh, here, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. But you also told it when we met uh, again, uh, working at the uh, Wiltern with yeah. Theo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cracked me up. Yeah, yeah. I it's absolutely a, love it. Yeah, it's a great, great bit. I also yeah. have like... Uh, there's a the whole thing of, that I haven't touched on about that where it was like, you know, my sister's got a lot of friends that are also, because uh, like she goes to a school where it's like, it's a program to help people with disabilities, but when you're in a program like that, it's a whole wide range of people with disabilities. So like her best friend's like a crack baby and like her other friends got like cerebral palsy. Skills. And they're like the funniest kids I've ever met. Yeah. And it's just like such a fun dynamic to see her like and her friends and just them just being themselves. And it was like, oh, this is like a side that I never really see or a lot of other people get to see and it feels fun cracking jokes about it uh and them because i truly think they're funnier than me yeah and you don't make the joke at her expense no no it's no, at no. your expense and yeah, it's yeah. very it's hilarious yeah, yeah and it's fun to see the people that do get mad because i've gone on the road with santino oh yeah yeah and, and he has a whole bit about the word retard which is hysterical i'm also not one of those people who's like an like a, i'm not gonna police people about like saying the word retard or retarded like if someone yeah. like says that to a person disabled then it's like yeah absolutely they should beat the shit out of them right but that was the thing that i ran into going on the road with santina because he has a whole bit about it and then i remember we were doing the meet and greet and this lady came out and she oh, was like go. karen no 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 she was so like amazed she was like i my son's uh got um down syndrome and he's mm. uh and I worry, not, I don't worry, but she's like, I, I want him to live a regular life or not a regular life. I want him to live the most, you know, normal life as he can. And I want him to experience love. And I want him, you know, these are things that I also worry about and think about. And, uh, to see you joke about that in that way about your sister and know that it comes from such a good place of love is like, she was like, I loved it. It was great. It was the best yeah, part of my night. And cool. it felt really fucking cool to be like, oh, that's dope. And then immediately after that. Karen came. Oh, uh, here we go. And she was like, you should talk to him about that word he used. I was like, what? And she goes, you should talk to him about saying retarded. And I was like, why? And she was like, well, because your sister's retarded. And I just looked at her. And then she used it? Yeah. I was like, oh, come on, Karen. Are you fucking kidding me? I was wow. Like, you haven't even listened to the joke at all then. Yeah. 
you just like heard the the trick you know and the, yeah. even the lady who like whose kid was like she was like what the fuck's going on and i was like this is insane yeah yeah and like she, i'm gonna tell the guy who brought me out that he should change his set yeah it was it was just oh. a really it and that was the thing that i've noticed about especially with my sister being um because she was born premature mm. so she was born with a tracheotomy she was born earlier than she was supposed to be mm. and so she had like development issues and like for the longest time in our, her whole life they were like she's not gonna be able to talk or like do a lot of like regular things and then she blew everyone's expectations out of the water and she's like oh, good she's like you know she's she could, she's probably gonna be able to i you know one day live on her own but i don't think that's ever gonna happen because my mom sure. would never want her to leave you know she's like everyone's fucking princess right she's got the coolest life right now have you seen rick glassman's new show uh-huh um are any of the characters on that similar to your sister yeah 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 it, it feels very much like it. yeah yeah. you think she'd ever live in like a like a roommate scenario uh i think she would um i think she could too because like her best friend is uh her name's hannah uh and when they're two together it's you know my sister's always been like a very um not like quiet kid she's very like fun or rambunctious but the way i see her when she's hanging out with her friends is unlike anything i've seen when she's around like most of her family yeah. like when she has friends that bring her the I don't know, the joy that they bring out of her is just very it's like oh okay like you are having your own fun you guys have your own jokes you guys speak in your own language like mm-hmm. you guys are doing like this is like this is what this should I do with my friends. Like this is right. just beautiful. It's an amazing thing. Yeah, I was um, wondering yesterday. I had a, an interaction with a special needs child yesterday at the beach, um, and he ended, ended up interacting with this very large group of kids. And I was like, "Oof, let's see how this goes." Those kids brought him right in, played with them. It was awesome. Yeah. But I was thinking to myself, I was like, "I wonder how many kids with special needs we played with when we were kids." And we we had no idea. Yeah. It was just oh, that's just Frank or like yeah, what you know yeah, like yeah. on He's the block. just a little silly. Yeah. We need a fifth for the basketball team. Like yeah, yeah. get in here. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like there was. Uh, I remember in high school there was kids that were part of like the special ed program, and it's so funny because it was like back in the day how terrible everything was because it was like you could just have ADHD and then you're like oh this kid's got down syndrome and then they just put them in the same class yeah right and uh so I think I was in special ed for like a little bit (laughs) yeah (laughs) they were like you're a high functioning learner I'm like sweet uh I'm super smart yeah Yeah. Uh, um but I was always very nice I never and I remember there being kids who like straight up would pick on kids that were disabled and it was just like what the fuck you know yeah yeah that's not cool yeah it's not cool yeah I um, it but took also, me a little bit, but like yeah, I, yeah. I've got some relatives that have some special needs as well yeah, that yeah. are on the spectrum, and it's like once you learn how to interact and like nothing's emotional, it's all factual based. Yeah, then you know it's like oh now I know how to communicate with this person. Yeah, absolutely, they're not going to get offended. It's just like can we go here and do this? I would want to rather go here and do that. Yeah, no problem. But also in the same vein, it's so funny how like I you know I'm from East Side San Jose. Like my family's been pretty much poor their whole lives, and they're like you know. There, we're better now, but like when my sister was born, it was just so funny to see like how not PC we were in a sense. Where it was like right. they, uh, like her nickname growing up was Thumbelina. Okay. Because we thought, because she was, when she was born, she could fit in our hand. And so we used to call her Bean Thumbelina. They called me Franks and Beans. Like we would, and it wasn't like teasing her, but it was like in a term of endearment. You know what yeah. I mean? She loved it. And it was just, but also like growing up now, and I was like, oh, if we did that now, people would be like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. You can't be, you can't be calling her that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, dude, it's our family. We yeah, can yeah. say whatever we want to inside our family. Exactly. It's it's interesting how like in the eighties and nineties. I'm forty two. I don't know how old you are, but you're thirty three. Okay, very cool. In, in in my early childhood, it was everything goes. We said yeah. the R word all the time. We said the F word all the time, and it didn't mean either of those two definitions. Yeah, yeah. It was just what we said. Yeah. My my dad uh, is a big bar fly. Loves bars. Drinker my whole life, and he, I remember, um, you know, he he. He is probably one of the most progressive people. He's a lot more progressive in my family than I think a lot of my other family members. But even then, he would be like, uh, yeah, I'm going to hang out with my gay friends. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's a gay couple. That's Steve. Yeah. And, you know, or he'd like go to bars like, oh, that's gay Frank. That You know, that's black <laughs> Steve. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it was, it's just because so, he wasn't like, oh, that's a black guy. He was like, no, that's my friend. That's black Steve. You know? Yeah. There's, there's eight Steves. Yeah. He's the black Steve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just this weird uh time period they all grew up in like my grandfather even was like he used to work in the mail room at the post office and uh no 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 i think it was at the time but he was a manager of a bunch of different uh races of people right and Mm. my dad would tell me all the time how he would just make off-colored remarks thinking he was being funny but he didn't realize like how how not how like racist it was yeah 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 
Uh, yeah, I had a pretty. Uh, my both my grandparents were um, like overtly racist, but in their minds, I don't believe that they thought they were being disrespectful. No, not at all. And I also think like uh, back in the day, like my grandfather went to war, mm -hmm. and my step grandfather was uh, on a navy ship. He also went to war too, mm -hmm. and um, it's so funny to hear him talk about military stuff and because when you're in the military like that's the enemy that's you know what i mean especially yeah. after pearl harbor and all that right. stuff. so i remember this fucking guy we were watching uh uh like a a, a documentary about uh pearl harbor <laughs> and just in the middle of it he turns to me and goes you know we had to like we had to drop the bomb right you know we had to do wow. that and i was like what do you mean he was like i was like because of pearl harbor he's like no they were like you know eating their babies and shit it was like crazy they were like crazy people i was like i was eating i remember was, yeah i was like grandpa yeah like yo what did you <laughs> did he see that happen? did he see people he eating never saw it but it's just heard like, about it and that's the thing is like yeah. imagine being in the military then it's like what you got to be told and the things you got to you know to be able to yeah justify that you know what i mean just to be able to get yourself psyched up enough to go to war. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't even imagine what they would have to tell yeah, me. Yeah, My real grandfather uh, went to war, and that's how he got his uh, citizenship. Because back, because I don't know if you know, so you can get your citizenship. I don't know if it's like that anymore, but back in the day, you can fight, join the military, and then become a U.S. citizen that right. way. Right. Yeah, so. I he, think it's still that way. Yeah, he yeah. remembers vividly being in Mexico, and they would, like, drop pamphlets out. Flyers being like Mexicans, come help your neighbor build America. Wow! And they were offering the military, like, and yeah, offering citizenship and stuff. So yeah, so he like that's why I always think America's like the best gang because he flew to another country to like to like get jumped in. You know what right? I mean? Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What branch was he in? Uh, my step grandfather Gino, he was in the Navy, and then my grandfather Ed was uh, military. He was in the Army. He was um, think something with like radios and shit but he ended up getting sent out and he said it was this scariest thing he'd ever been because he wasn't oh, yeah. he was in the way he described it was he was in a in a situation to what he was doing his job was not like a one that would be on the field but then he had to go out on the field with people as right. part of his job and he said it then like and then he just kind of doesn't really talk about it right <laughs> and that's where the story stops yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, every Christmas I rewatch uh, White Christmas with yeah. my mom, yeah. and it's all just the tone of it is like, of course I was in the military. Everybody was in the military. I was in the military with that guy, and that's our general, and we all still hang out. And it's like it was just so common for our grandparents' uh, age to just, yeah, I'm gonna go. Everybody has to go. Yeah, and it's like now it's like, oh my god. Well, they had the draft too. Yeah, well, they you have to go. Made people yeah. go. Yeah, it's not a choice. I mean, unless you're certain presidents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You get> bone spurs. <laughs> yeah, or certain rock stars. Yeah, or, yeah. It's like, I got to go to Canada for a minute. There was a few famous people who went. I yeah. Remember, yeah, I remember, yeah. I think there was a musician who was was it El no Elvis did no Elvis didn't I, go. I think Elvis went, but they kind of gave him like the cruise. You know, yeah. it, was like, it was just like yeah, that's Elvis, but we can't let him be getting killed over there. Yeah, because everyone will find out that Elvis got Man, killed. Man, you know, that would be kind of cool to see them do a draft now. Because what like what actors do you think would be like? I'm a fucking, you know what I mean? Like what yeah. actors are like actors, but then which ones are like, oh shit. Like yeah. this is just how he is. Which ones would sign up? Be like, look yeah. at me. I'm no, I'm I feel like Tom Cruise would absolutely. He would try. He, but also I think he'd be pretty good at killing people. Uh, well. And Keanu Reeves. I just, there's something inside me. Definitely it, Mel Gibson. I def, okay. I'll take Keanu Reeves yeah. and I'll take Mel Gibson. If depending on what race we're fighting. Right. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, Tom Cruise, if, without his prop master and his armor, I don't think he's got. You don't think if they told double. him that they're like these people don't believe in Scientology, he would fucking go Hilarious. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, where, where are? Where yeah, you are know they what they at? said about Elrond? And he's yeah. like, what? <laughs> that would be interesting if like the CIA or the Secret Service came to Tom Cruise and they were like, all right, smarty pants, we're gonna pitch you in the game. Like, yeah. we really need you're gonna go and meet with Putin, you know, just to see if you can talk him down from this, you know. But you got to kill him while you're there. Yeah, yeah. Was, Fucking what's his name? Uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman would be great. He went over and talked to Kim. Kim. Yeah, Trump. yeah. That was crazy. And then they ended up putting like a scene like that in um, that Seth Rogen movie. Oh yeah, the uh, they all play basketball. And yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of that flick. Oh, I think it was the um, not the oppressor, uh, <laughs> the dictate. No, was it the dictator? The dictator, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to look stuff up, but it was a whole lot of dead air. So now we just guess. That's great. Yeah. That movie came out and everyone got very upset. Was that one of the first movies that came out in Pandy? They were just like, fuck theaters, we're just going to drop it. Yeah. Or no, it got banned by Sony. It got banned by Sony because yeah. of everything. And then they just put it out. And same thing with, I think, The Hunt. 
Yeah. Which I watched and was like, this is a great fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've seen The Hunt. I have it, to look it up. Yeah, it was the movie that like Trump was uh, made a huge like fuss about because it was about like uh, people killing Republicans, uh, <laughs> and then you like watch it and you're like, no, the main character is just from Texas, and like, right. yeah, obviously they do round up a bunch of like MAGA people, but it's like she still kicks ass, and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. If the, a good action sequence can make up for a whole lot. Oh my god, yes. Favorite action movie? Uh, you ever see? Um, all right, so I this, I'm weird. I love South Korean movies. Okay, so does my sister. They have a lot of really good martial arts uh, movies yeah. that come out of there. Um, there's one called The Man from Nowhere, and it's about like you know typical guy like runs a pawn shop and then like he get like makes a connection with like the neighbor kid and then like the mom gets killed and then yeah. like, all this shit happens. He has to try to save the kid. You know, very like man on fire kind of deal. Yeah, but like it's just so good and it's one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen is at the end because he they, he takes down like the whole group of people and he fights people with knives and the knife fighting scene is so well choreographed yeah. that you're like this is insane that's nuts also it has got some of the best fight scenes okay i was about to bring that up as far as kung fu goes those are my favorite a series yeah i think because they don't overdo it it's not like no. some guy jumps 45 feet no it's like well, it could possibly be done yeah and donnie um, yen's so good yeah so i mean good. like the level that they get to and then it's like where can they possibly go for four yeah and you're like Oh yeah, he's okay. fighting fucking. Yeah. <laughs> what's his name? Yeah, um, in the coal with yeah. the coal buckets and Dude, all that stuff. So good. get out of here. Well, because it reminds me of like old school Bruce Lee movies. Where, yeah. Like uh, was it Tower of Death or where he's fighting fucking Kareem Abdul Bar? Uh, I don't know that one well enough to like say yes. But. I think I, I might got the athlete wrong, but it yeah. was uh, it was a Bruce Lee movie, and I think he has to climb up a tower. And one of the people that he has that he fights is like an NBA player, right? And he's just like huge and tall, and it's like so dope. Yeah, and that's all like that. That's the kind of famous I'd love to be in as, as American is to be able to play the American villain in like foreign movies. Yeah, and but still go to the grocery store here. Yeah, and like yeah. hey, darn, weren't you? Nah, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was just in Kareem was just in um, that new Netflix movie. Hustle yeah, uh, yeah yeah I almost cried watching that dude what a great movie so good I love Adam so, Sandler man he can't make a bad movie every even I, I, I had made a I was had made an argument with someone I was like if you took away every comedy in Adam Sandler's career and only put the serious stuff mm -hmm. he would still be a solid fucking actor yeah I mean it's nuts yeah. I don't even like basketball yeah, but it makes you like, oh, I love and I was, this shit. And I was into it. Yeah, I was like, oh, this so is the, how they get it yeah. and like how they really go out there and look for the best dudes in the world. Yeah. So when you're sitting in there, like you're really watching like the top. And athletes. that's how Adam Sandler is. He just shows yeah. up. Yeah. I've had count. I, there's a group of comics that play basketball. It's like the long, one of the longer running like basketball groups. And yeah, he'll just show up randomly. Oh, he'll play with you guys. Yeah, and he'll play with everybody. Wow. I mean, I'm not playing, but <laughs> I've heard about. That. I've heard. I've heard yeah. of this. But yeah, I've seen pictures of like comics posting on Instagram where they're like, "Fucking play with Adam Sandler today." Uh, Gary Shandling used to have a game at his house on Sundays, which I only know because I watched a documentary about him after he passed. Um, cool, Gary Shandling's dead. Great segue. <laughs> uh, as far okay, so we touched on like fighting action films but what's your favorite like gunplay once we start bringing weapons into it I mean I think the John Wick movies are pretty great yeah um, if we gotta go big guns yeah I think uh, yeah uh, John Wick is the one that I think taking it so far even the Matrix movies are great but John Wick's like yeah. he's a guy with a lot of guns is like the premise yeah um, but there's one movie that I really fucking love that uh, if we're talking guns and that's The Accountant Okay, uh, Ben Affleck. Yes, have you yes. Seen that? he's like an autistic hitman. Yeah, I kind of uh, brings us full circle. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little it's bit. Definitely a guy you don't want to say the R word around. You don't. He'll shoot you right in your face. Uh, it's been a minute since I've seen that one, but I remember enjoying it. Yeah, it was really good. Anytime you can go out to your shed and hit a button and the tools move and yeah, like yeah. guns are well lit and you're like, hmm, yes, yeah, so I'll have. By the way, that's good. what I want. My wife is like, we're never having a gun in the house ever. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, I just want to make a bunch of money so I could go into my garage and press a button and then. <laughs> and she's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, ha, ha, ha. they're not in the house. Yeah, they're in the garage. Yeah, yeah. And he's got the basement too. That yeah. You can like climb down the ladder and yeah. like. Oh, there's more. He's got the RV with the full of like paintings and shit. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny. My dad uh, loves that movie and that's why I like the movie. Uh, my dad's a weird guy because he'll like watch movies and then he'll Shazam the songs. 
So at the end of the accountant, there's a guy that sings the closing song. It's a beautiful song. I think his name's Sean Rowe. Mm-hmm. Um, and my dad shazammed him, found out where he was playing next, and then we went to go see him. And it was like in a cafe in Santa Cruz. Yeah. And it was like thirty. It was like it was like seeing like a like one of my comedy shows when I was starting, where you're just like, oh, it's at a place, it's like at a bar. Yeah, this he just was, happened to get on a soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, but he was like that. This is his tour. Like he sold it out too. It was like a hundred oh, people. Like, okay. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like, like twenty five bucks for taking shit. But like, it was so funny to see like my dad in this like cafe, right? Watching like a guy play music on an acoustic guitar. My dad's in full head to toe Dodgers gear. Oh, nice. And everyone there's like enjoying their nice Santa Cruz Sunday. Yeah. Bro, it was so fucking funny. I'm gonna uh if I can find it, I'm gonna put a clip of it. Yeah. yeah. Right here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh do you remember his name by any chance? I think it is Sean Rowe. Oh, that's right. Um, you said that. I Sean think it's, Rowe. I think it's called I think it's leaving something behind. Nice. Um yeah, I'm pretty sure. If I can't find it, I'll just play the credits. All right, perfect. Yeah, just play the credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. And then it's the it's the credits of the accountant yeah, instead yeah. of the credits of the show. That'd be Dude, funny. I I remember when we were at the concert. This guy, like my dad, uh, so my dad, uh, my dad grabs a seat and it's like, we get there early, my dad grabs a seat and it's like right in front of, like you clear view, right? And then this couple comes and he uh, sits right in front of my father. And my dad's like, you know, a six foot Mexican guy with a ridiculous facial hair and like, just, you know, he's that cholo looking guy. And yeah. my dad's just staring at him and he looks at me and he walks up and he goes, hey man. And the guy's like, it turns around, he's like, huh? And he's with his wife and he's like, are you going to sit in fuck in front of me all night? And the guy was like, uh, and he wow. just got up and like moved his chair. And I was like, just like, pops, come on. Was the chair there for him to take or did he bring a chair? And he brought a chair and like sat in front of my father. Wow. And I was just like, that is, that's on him. That Way to a, read the room, yeah. pal. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. <laughs> You're not going to find me doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, nope. Big, big tough guy. Oh, let me sit behind you. Yeah. Oh God, it was just so funny. Oh man, that's a good story. And has there been another artist that he's picked up from a movie that he's still like? Yes, yes. Uh, it was that guy, and then oh damn, who else uh, was it? Um, I can't remember. It was just it was some like French lady. Okay. From like a movie that yeah. it was just some song you'd heard. He's so. Like, he'll, that's yeah, he was like, I love it. And I'm yeah. just like, okay. I'm yeah, picking he, that up. The most random, yeah. eclectic taste of music I've ever seen. That is a great way to pick up new music. Yeah. Um, it's funny that he shazams it too. Yeah, it is really hysterical. You just Google soundtrack for this Nah, movie. man. You should see him text. It's yeah. though it is exactly how you think a parent would text that doesn't know how to use a fucking phone. Does he have an iPhone? No, he's got a Getro. Okay. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. Oh, it's Metro PCS. Okay, <laughs> he calls it a Getro. <laughs> that's hilarious. Is it a flipper? No, it's like their version of like an iPhone. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is also something very funny. I found out that uh, uh, all of those phones come preloaded with YouTube. Do they really? Yeah. Wow. So that's why like uh, someone had made a, I, you know, Brian Moses. I do know Brian. Yeah. So he made yeah. a comment once where he was just like, uh, yeah, if it's on, if it's not on YouTube, black people don't watch it. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, man. And I was like, I don't understand that. And he was saying, he was just like, he goes, he was, he said, he was like, cause predominantly Mexicans and uh, black people all have Metro PCS. Cause it's in all of the like big metropolitan areas. Yeah. And it was just like, and that's why a lot of things pop. Cause it's automatically got YouTube on it. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, that actually is, pretty hilarious and so it's got to be affiliated with google somehow absolutely yeah that's interesting did you um did you watch the most recent john oliver yeah and he goes into the whole oh i actually have not seen the most recent john oliver then i won't ruin it for you but i do want to tell me about it he gets into uh the top four like amazon Mm -hmm. apple google and like how we used to break an at&t and at&t got broken up for antitrust in the 40s and that's when like we got Voicemail and um, what's what was before voicemail? Ta- uh, recording machine. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, Star sixty nine. Like innovation happens when we yeah. start splitting these companies up. And he goes into like how Google will only suggest Google stuff when you Google stuff. Yeah. And it's a verb. Like you don't Bing anything. No. And I think Bing might be the second. Or Yah- Yahoo mm-hmm. was one of them. But yeah. it's a it's a fascinating watch because he's like we should be breaking these things up. Yeah, because that's the other is like if you ha- now have a monopoly on a whole demographic of people because of where they are uh, economically. It's like, yeah, you could feed them whatever you want. Right. I have a friend that, uh, the guy who used to produce the show's name's Nick. He has a theory that one day we'll be praying 
to Lord Bezos for our food. Hilarious. To get delivered by drones. I mean, whew, it was uh, when COVID shut down everything, you mm-hmm. really got to see like what happens when everyone panics. Yeah. Yeah. I thought for a second that they were putting us inside because a meteor was going to hit and there'd just be a less catastrophe if we were just all inside when the meteor I hit. mean, what's the first thing you're doing if they're like, the world's ending tomorrow, going a to meteor's Vegas. hitting? Uh, going to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Because that's, I mean, that's what I would do if I was off tomorrow anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, it's very funny. Like, who's still going to work to work Vegas? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's you're also sitting, true. You're sitting at the craft table like, no, what the, uh, can I speak to a manager? <laughs> yeah, and then you go around the table and you're like, can I help you, sir? And I'm like, and then you walk back around. Yeah. You're playing all the roles. <laughs> oh. Just, oh, what was that movie where Vegas was empty and it's like all zombies and shit? And oh, they, uh, they put the shipping containers around it and then they blew it up. with. Oh, a, uh, I think it's uh, Vegas Vacation. No. Um, hilarious. <laughs> I think it's Army of the Dead. No, not Army of the Dead. Uh, yes, something like that. It was. Yeah, it was Army of the Dead. Yeah. yeah. Not to be confused with uh, Zack Snyder. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I hate Zack Snyder. What? Yeah. So I went into it going like, okay, Zack, what you going to do? And I was like, all right. Why do you hate okay. Zack Snyder? I just, I don't hate As his, a person or yes, like his as a, movie? As an actual person, oh, I okay. think he's yeah. just a cunt. Yeah. Like the way he talks, it's like no one can make films like me. I'm like, well, yeah, a lot of people have made yeah. films better than you. I just think he, I don't know. I think Marvel did it right in their, the way they planned it out and had multiple directors. And yeah. he was just like, well, DC can't make shit without me. So go for mm. yourself. And he can't, he can't make a movie without his wife producing. Yeah. Now I'm talking, just talking shit. You're just fucking talking mad shit. Hot take. Come at me, Zach. Let's fucking <laughs> Snyder go. walks yeah. in. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a mile down the street. He just <laughs> knocks on the door. He's like, I have YouTube on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I got Getro PCS. I'm ready. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, are there any directors that you hate? No, there's no directors that I hate. Um, my wife hates... Uh, Keanu Reeves and um, who else does she hate? She doesn't like Keanu Reeves because of his acting, and then she also doesn't like Nicolas Cage. I can see the parallel, but I think um, Keanu has so much more nuance. Yeah, but I also like I like both of them so much. Oh, I, I agree with her about Nicolas Cage. That's so crazy. I showed her Pig, and she was like, this, she laughed the whole time. Laughed at him. Laughed at the whole movie because it's not a comedy. Exactly. Right. She was like, this is fucking ridiculous. I was yeah. like, I know, but it's funny. And he it's had, good. He had his moments. I mean, one of my favorite movies, and I sometimes hate to admit this, is Face Off. No, it's a great movie. It's again, the, the gunplay, bringing us back yeah. to that. I think gun gunplay and Face Off and Heat, I think those are the OG gun movies. Yeah. Oh, Heat's so good. Yeah. People, so many movies uh, do like odes to Heat. Yeah. Because of how uh, Michael Mann, right? Michael Mann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of my favorites. He did Collateral yeah. also. He did. Yeah, yeah. That was so good. Such a good movie. Man, uh, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx. And they were actually, some, they, so they, for a moment, they were going to have Jamie Foxx play Tom Cruise's role. Right. And then uh, I'm so glad it was the other way, too, because yeah. him as like a fucking run down taxi driver, you're like, okay. Yeah. yeah. I heard that Jamie Foxx is training to play Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, I could see that. That'd be great. The way I heard it was he was on stage when Chappelle got rushed to the bowl. Yeah, yeah. And he was the one that caught him. Oh, I believe that. But can you imagine? Like, Jamie's already an athlete. Yeah. He's played in a thousand football movies. It's fantastic. And now he's training to become Mike Tyson. Yeah, and you and, as, and bro, if he could become Ray Charles, he can absolutely become Mike Tyson. 100%. <laughs> and you want to get caught by that dude who's oh, yeah, like yeah. been training to fight? Yeah. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Nah. Is he going to practice as Mike Tyson? Oh, yeah. He beat that dude's ass. Did you see? Remember the video? I remember there's a few moments in life where it's like the before and then there's the after you see this. Mm-hmm. And most recent for me was when that first video of Mike Tyson boxing again, mm-hmm. like just practicing. Oh, yeah. And everyone was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he's like 50 something. And he still got it. Oh, yeah. And then you watch the video of him on that Segway and he falls. Like, uh, what's it called? The. It's the two wheel thing. That yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. He gets on it and just like totally dumps off it. It's like, yeah, well, you're good on your feet. But yeah, <laughs> nothing motorized for. He was for at the Mike. store once. He pat, he walked by me. Really? It was. I said it was the same level of fear uh, as you get when you're at a zoo and a huge tiger, like a fucking pret, like just a tiger walks by you because yeah. you're watching him and you're like, oh, that is a dangerous man. Yeah. Like at any point he like he's just he's he's so calculated he's got it yeah. like that is it was it I was like oh this is what like you like 
I think men, especially, is like when you you know we walk around and then you see like someone that's physically bigger than you. Because in our heads, I feel like yeah, we always have that like oh we're fucking sizing them up. Like oh yeah. we got you know, and then you meet like an actual person who like does this shit for a living and Trained you're like oh shit okay yeah. never mind it's just different it's different the only thing between your life and staying or going is his decision to not just reach out and end you yeah yeah oh yeah yeah and that's how women live every single day no i'm just kidding <laughs> oh. yeah there was an incident at the bar by my house last night oh no way this dude was just getting handsy and it was like oh uh, i've had that too. i've uh i've had uh friends recently i've been around the patio uh or just like just different places uh and just drunk dudes just coming up and be like hey and they don't know how to be in public and you're just like bro get the fuck away like you yeah. have to you have to not be here you're right. fucking creepy are you you're not still working at the store no i just perform there a lot right because yeah. you got passed mm-hmm. in the store and that was recent it was like a year and a half ago and were you in that class with Ryan Sickler and was that I the think batch? I was before him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there, I saw you on TV get mm-hmm. told in the kitchen yeah. by, I forgot his Adam name. Adam Egan. Adam, who yeah, moved yeah. down to Texas yeah. to help Joe run his club. Yeah, and they had us re they had us reenact that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a terrible actor. Well, you pulled it off because I believed it. Oh, okay. Cool. I was like, wow, their camera guy was just standing right if there. If it was real, I would have been crying the whole time because that's what actually happened. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because so the way they did it was, uh, so he watches you for like six weeks mm-hmm. and then he's watching everybody. And then at the end of the six weeks, I, and I knew it was going to happen because like after I got off oh, my set, he like gave me a high five and I was like, you've never given me a high five. Oh, or a fucking wow. fist bump. Like, you never do shit like never. that. Never. Never. Does he give anybody a fist bump? It's very rare. He does, but it's yeah. very rare. that. But I know. I was like, oh, okay. That's something. Yeah. And then I remember I went in the back. I was smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I start to leave, and it's him and the director for the Showtime doc they're doing. Yeah. And I walk by him, and then he comes up to me, and he's just like, uh, he's like, hey, just want to let you know, uh, been you know, love your journey. You're very, very fun. Uh, what's called, uh, you're very, very funny. I love the turn you've made. I've watched you grow. Um, you know, you're past now. You can start calling in on Mondays for paid regular spots. Wow. You're, you're paid regular now. And then I immediately just started crying. Yeah. Cause I, he, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He was like, yeah. And the scream I let out when he told me another comic, um, was there. Uh, he thought someone had told me that, uh, someone had died. Right. Because it was such a like shocking thing. And then I was just hugging at him and crying. And then they're like, no, he just got passed. And he was like, Oh, fucking sweet. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Were you uh, passed alone or were you passed with a group? It was me, Laura bites, uh, miss Pat and Tim Dillon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, and Timmy. I was the only door guy that got passed in that group. Right. Yeah, because so he he usually passes three like outside people or people that you know what I mean like yeah, and then he passes like uh, a door person. Yeah, maybe it's usually sometimes it's a door person that gets passed. Sometimes there's not. If one's ready. If one's ready. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I was like fucking. Oh man, I was like so ready. Did you and you were you still working at the store at the time? I was. I worked there for about a year and a half after that. Before I, I actually I didn't quit until the pandemic hit. Right. And it was good that I didn't quit before because the whole reason that I even the whole reason the whole reason I'm fucking still afloat is because I had that job. And it was because when I, when we all got furloughed, Mm -hmm. the store still took care of us. They pay like, I don't, I don't think a lot of people know this, but the store took care of all of their employees, like very well. They made sure that we were pretty taken care of up for at least a couple months. And then when we finally were able to file for unemployment and everything, we were still were able to get all those benefits as well. So they went above, I think they spent, God, they spent like, a couple million dollars yeah just making sure we were all fine and joke kind of pitched in on that too, a lot right? of comics pitched in yeah. too because they also pitched in for the charity which was the fund that also helped us to paid regulars and employees yeah 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 so because i heard about that and i was like man how far can that go they have to have like 50 60 i mean employees. They, they took care of so many people it yeah. was very very good it was it was awesome that's like, super cool. it was a life-saving thing too because i yeah. was gonna it was so funny because i was gonna quit because Rogan and a few other people were giving me that, like, you're paid regular now, you got to quit and blah, blah, start your, start your podcast, you know, do what you can, you know, we'll help you as much as we can. I was like, absolutely. And my wife was like, fuck those millionaires. Right. <laughs> yeah. You need a job. And then the pandemic hit, and then I was able to still uh, have all those benefits and apply for things. Yeah. Because another comic, Abby, had quit right before, and he wasn't able to. Robert? Yeah, he wasn't yeah. able to get any of that yeah. until they opened it up later, which was amazing because he was fucking sweating and i would be too dog we were all sweating 
Yeah, he's doing very well with it. He's his doing great now. Melrose Podcast. Check yeah, it out. Yeah, crushed uh, it. I send them work all the time. People uh, think that we rent by the hour and we just don't. No. So anytime someone's like, oh, I need a podcast studio for an hour, I send them right down to Melrose. Perfect. Him and Ari. Check it out yeah. if you want to rent by the hour. They're dope. Uh, but my follow-up question was, and you kind of answered this already, because in my head, getting past the store next day, agents, managers, no, bookings. No, no. Oh, it's like, oh, paid regulars get the keys to the castle. You're going to get a writing job on a TV show. Yeah. And your your next 52 weekends are all booked out. Yeah, yeah. And it's just. It is not like that. Just because your name's on the wall. It's weird. It is very interesting. I mean, even then before that, I was I think I was 25, 26 when I won Roast Battle. And that was in front of everybody. That was in front of like JFL. That was in front of like. Like that's when I got my manager, my first manager, uh, who I'm not with anymore. Yeah. But like everyone was like salivating, right? And then I got you, signed. You won the TV show or the roast battle I won at the, the store? TV show, okay. and I also won the ones at the store. When, wow! Because that was a part of it when it first started. So I was the yeah. first undefeated guy. I think I went six and zero. Oh. Wow! Uh, yeah, and that was when it was just the open mic, and then starting, and then everyone started coming, and it became the big thing. Yeah. And then once you get like real people, and then you start losing. <laughs> yeah. But it made you better and a better right. writer. Um. So then, even after winning roast battle. This was before I got passed. I was opening up. I got to open up for like Dave, Jezelnik, uh, Dave Rogan. Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. I got to open up for like a bunch of people. Uh, yeah. Fucking um, Mo Amer. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's great. Mm-hmm. And uh, he took me on the road, hooked me up. And that was actually the guy that got me the most time right before I, I got passed. So mm-hmm. that helped a lot. Oh, yeah. And then also Kreischer took care of me. Um, mm-hmm. I won Rose Battle. And then I got to like ghostwriting a few things. Uh, but yeah, And even then when I got passed, it was just like. It's funny to see because it's like even if you get all these things, that's not always the, that's not the thing that gets you. Right. You know what I mean? It's a step. It's right? a step, and it's somebody's next dream, right? If of I course. could only get to here, and it's every, and it's not the case. No, <laughs> it's a ladder. Yeah, and it's funny that you talk about like fuck these millionaires, but like I've heard either Joe or Bert talk about uh, this on various podcasts about you know uh, Bert had hurt Bert. Yeah, and they were like, you need to fucking quit your TV show and just focus on podcasting and comedy. And I don't know what it is about Bert's brain, but he was like, all right. And I I don't know. If I was on TV and I was building out a brand and I was getting in people's houses every day, it would be very hard for me to quit that television yeah. show and go, hey, everybody, just check me out on the radio. Yeah. I'm cool. Well, it's also tough because it's the kind of people, you know, yeah. like Eric, Eric Griffin t- uh, told me this story where, you know, when he was doing I'm Dying Up Here and then his podcast and then like, uh, you know, um, workaholics bro that's montez dog that's yeah you know? so he we would go out and his rooms would wouldn't be fully sold out they'd be pretty well and i remember just being like what like bro you're montez he's like yeah man it's crazy sometimes it doesn't translate we'd walk out and people were like montez and they just didn't know he did stand up yeah and it was insane to me and then he did i'm dying up here and i remember he went on the road and he had like a fucking front row full of like 70 year old people mm. and he was just shitting on them and he was like all oh, the people in the back from workaholics that are younger were dying and he was like you probably don't even know where i'm from where have you seen me on and they're like we love you and i'm dying up here and he was like oh fuck he had like apologies like i gotta start the show over your actual fans because he forgot that yeah this different show is it gives you that demographic whereas like a podcast it really does you get your fans you get comedy fans you get podcast fans so like for me i'm doing my podcast and i just get to do stand-up and my wife's got her solid ass job too. Nice. So it is, I, I'm in a position where I can't complain, mm-hmm. but if I were to complain, right. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be about, you know, getting into festivals and JFL and all that shit. But, but it has to help. Being passed has to help. I mean, I don't know. I think. Have you been to New York? I have been to New York. Uh, I haven't been since I've been passed. Okay. That's, that was my next question is, can you just roll up in the cellar and be like, Pass at the store. I went Can I once. Audition? I went once, and this was after roast battle. And uh, I wouldn't. Eat, I remember, uh, you know, the Yamanika Sanders. So great. I love her. Death. She was so nice. She showed me around. Mm-hmm. And I know a few people, and some people know of me. But I'm also, n- after working at the store so much, and how such a prestigious club that is, I respect the seller so much. Right. And that it's like I wouldn't want to be disrespectful in any way. Because I remember when I went there, I was like, I just sat by the bar, like I didn't like. I didn't really want to like introduce myself because I was so shy because yeah. it's like you know it's like what I imagine it's like when you go to the store for the first time it's so intimidating it's intimidating to, right it's still intimidating for me to go to the store now even yeah. though like I could go there and I could recognize like and you're kind you know Emily you're comfortable with everybody yeah it's still she's yeah never there when I'm there hilarious um, <laughs> I respect the store so much it's the one place I don't photograph yeah yeah like I the van's over there doing his thing yeah, and yeah. they had Pamela for a while and then that's not a thing anymore but like I just won't touch it yeah I'd rather just keep that place just for comedy and like, As, yeah. And I'll just go shoot at the yeah. Laugh Factory. Yeah. 
when I went to the cellar, someone was like, you want to sit in the booth? And I was like, no, absolutely not. I was like, I will not. And they were like, no, we're inviting. I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, nope. <laughs> I was like, not until I'm fucking passed. Yeah. Or I got uh, uh, the manager's permission. I was like, I ain't falling for that trip. I was there in November with Tim Dillon. He did the Beacon. And mm-hmm. I walked from the Beacon to the cellar. It's yeah. 73 blocks. So great. I was like, because I was nervous. I'm like, going to the cellar for the first time. Roll in there. And uh, I had texted Josh Adam Myers. And he was like, dude, yeah, let's meet. I got this spot and this spot. And then I'll meet you at the bar. And he rolled in and he was like, hey, everybody, this is Isaac. And he just introduced me around. And he was just sitting there having something to eat. And I was sitting in the bar. He's like, come down here, sit at this table. I was like, no. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Won't do it. Because no. if someone big walks in, I'm definitely. Oh, that's the first thing. Dude, I've walked in the back at the store and I've seen who's there. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to. There's. It was like Bill Burr, his friends, uh, another comic that I've known for like forever. They're just in the back smoking cigars. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be back here. Yeah. Like I've met Bill. We're acquaintances. But I'm also not going to be like. This is this is also like his shit. I'm not gonna fucking yeah. Reading the room is really important. So important, and I think that plays into how and who picks you up to go on the road. Oh, absolutely. Because if you're not a good hang, no. We, I was just talking about this. Hang's so important. It's super important, yeah. and it's no. It's never more important than in the Burt world. Absolutely. And I don't know if he takes anybody out that's sober, but like he's doing that massive festival right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Those cuts that he's putting out every day are I'm, nuts. The the funnest time and the most I ever drank was going out with Burt. And it was so much fun. I would worry about it because I think I could probably hang with him. I just remember we were getting, and one of my favorite trips was we were, I think we were in it was Detroit. It might have been Indianapolis, but we had to drive from one place to another. It was like three hours. And then I remember we had to outrun a snowstorm. Were you on the bus? It, we were, it was when it was like a private town car. So it was a big like SUV. Yeah. And then I remember we were like... Uh, we were leaving the theater and I was like, uh, I was like, uh, you want to grab these beers, road beers? And he was like, yeah. And then I just remember we were driving down, we're just having fun talking and we're just pound, like we're just crushing beers on this whole drive to the next spot. And I was like, this is fucking, this is awesome. Yeah. This is the best. But he crushes them like, <laughs> yeah, he like crushes them. I was yeah. like, Ugh. yeah. Sipping. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I could hang with him on the vodka level, but like, I think I could go white claw for beer like if he's drinking beer i could probably like have as many white claws as he's having beers i wouldn't brag about that (laughs) i've worked my whole life to get to this point i can i I could i can hang when it comes to weed like with their if if they were like take a hundred for every shot we take i'd be like all right let's do this you know what i mean yeah or 50 or 25 milligrams yeah oh i can't hang with weed oh i'm i do edibles so much i just got a new cbd Oh, okay. It's 25 milligram full spectrum CBD. It's got one milligram of THC. You feel every milligram? I cut it in half. Oh, my God. One is too much. I wow. used to get five milligram uh, THC gummies. I would cut them in half and cut them in half again. I would still get too high. Too high? Too high. It's crazy, the metabolism, man. I don't like how it processes in my brain. Oh. If I smoke one hit, done. I'm done really? for four hours. Oh, my God. I'm, it's 99. I'm ripped right now. Well, and you can function. Oh, absolutely. I can't. There's a silence in my head that's like, <laughs> did I say that out loud? Or am I about to say that out loud? So I think you can train, obviously you can train yourself yeah, yeah. to like function. Yeah. But I love this, uh, the inside comedy thing that we're on because I'm just so fascinated about the process. And like, yeah. it's, I think it's a lot like directing, which is what I do sometimes on the side. I'm an assistant director and sometimes I direct. Uh, Frank and I are new friends, by the way. So if you hear some new stuff, we're just getting to know each other. But no two directors have ever become directors the same way. And I think no two comics have ever become comics the same way. And it's just fat. I love the journey. And I love just asking people like how they did it and, and like how they got to where they're going. What, um, what are some goals that you have coming up? Like what is, are some plans? Can you share like, Oh, if I, I'm about to try and get this festival and that's going to get me this and that. Yeah. Or is that like top secret stuff? No, not at all. I mean, and it really, when it comes to like festivals, it's just really like the auditions they get, you know? And yeah. it, it's so funny because that Netflix festival, um, I auditioned for it and, um, you know, I had a, I thought I had a really good set. And then uh, they just told my manager, like, we just couldn't find a spot for them this festival. You know, that's kind of how it is. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up getting like seven, not seven. I ended up getting like five spots on the festival. Yeah. Because of just comics. So it's just, it's, there's really no like, I feel like when it comes to festivals, that there's no like rhyme or reason. It's such a like game above me. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it feels like it's, that's where it definitely feels like the more managers and agents and stuff. Cause even at the audition, I remember I was looking at the lineups and I was like, oh, you got like three paid regulars on here. Mm-hmm. And then like the other person you have is like, plays piano on TikTok. Like, right. This is like, you're having this person go up after this. Like, are you sure? Yeah. And then I remember being in like the bullpen with all the managers 
And then I hear them cracking jokes about how terrible other comics are on the lineup. And then I'm like, oh. so you guys know. Yeah. So you guys are fully aware. Yeah. And then uh, I had like I had some of them being like, oh, it's great that you're opening up. You guys are going to set this right. And I was like, yeah. And then we did, and it was great. And then Laura went up and blew it out of the water. And like, I don't think she even got picked. Really? And, and it was so funny because one of the things I heard for the festival was, we're looking for a Laura Bites type. Why not just get her? So, you know, and yeah. Uh, yeah, but I've been in so many different situations like that. The industry's so just funny because there's no rhyme or reason unless you're the funniest, which you're undeniable. Yeah. Um, or you just kind of got to, you know, you got to do it. Like, I remember when I, uh, I auditioned for JFL this year, all the people that were there were like, you did great. You were awesome. They're like, we remember you from watching you win Roast Battle. So I was just like, so you guys were all, you guys were there. You guys watched me you do this saw thing. It. Yeah. And, and then like, still didn't pick me. And then like now six years later, like I'm a paid regular and all this. And there's like, yeah, but, and it's so weird to like, my manager's like, you can't be upset. You can't feel a certain way. And it's true. You can't. Cause all it's going to do is just drive you crazy. Right. You just got to be better than you. You were the last time you auditioned. Yeah. Somebody, it was either Norman, uh, Mark Norman or DeStefano. I'm not sure. And it could not be either. But uh, one of them had auditioned for late night like 20 times. And then they bombed on the 20th time. And the next day they got a phone call to do late night. And he was like, what? I ate shit last night. Why did I get the phone call? And they were like, we just wanted to make sure you could bomb and not freak out on te television. And then he got late night like a week later. And it was yeah. just like, sometimes uh, you can have a good bomb. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know. I have, all my bombs are, are great to me because oh, it's stage time. I love a good bomb. Yeah. I feel more, there's nothing more comfortable I feel than when I'm bombing. Yeah. You know, and you get that heat on your neck. You start sweating. You're like, oh, well, fuck it. You know? Yeah. It's funny to me how awkward I can feel everyone being in the yeah, audience. Yeah. And I'm like, this is funny to me. Yeah, yeah. But there's no way to, I haven't found a way to translate that into turning yeah, it around. Yeah, it's tough. Sometimes I just like to sit in it. It's good, man. It makes you really feel alive where you're just yeah. like, oh, thank God. You know? Because yeah. I think if you do well too much, that's what makes those bombs worse. Yeah. Because you go on a consecutive rum of like, I had, like, you just haven't ran into an audience that didn't like you. Then you're like, oh, shit. Right. You're yeah. going to find one. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Hilarious. Louis told, told a story about how I think he was either filming something or he was going for like a late night thing, but he um, had to bomb. He wanted to bomb before because he needed to, he needed it. He just was like, because he didn't want the bomb to be the thing that he was filming. Right. Uh, so he went to like a bunch of shows and they were all great. And then he went to like an open mic and they fucking just was silent. So he bombed so hard and he was like, thank fucking God. He was like, you can always just count on comics to not fuck with anything you're saying. That's so funny because was it some of it just being the shock that Louis had a mic? I would just be sitting there with my mouth open. Like, uh, That'd be nuts. Oh, I think this was back in the day when he was like doing late nights or when he was like starting. Like, oh, before you know, he was yeah, Louie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Because if it happened now, yeah, yeah. he wouldn't be. Everyone's like. Uh, yeah. yeah. Everybody was just asking for autographs. Yeah. The last time I was at the improv uh, to shoot, to photograph, he, w he had popped in. He was running his new hour. Yeah. And it's the only time I've ever been kicked out of the improv. They were like, we have another shooter and Louis doesn't want any picks. We're going to have to get you to leave. You're like, like, no. You're like, can I just stay and you can just put my camera down? No. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, it, I could have run the cameras out to the car, but it was like, what am I? I mean, it would be great to see Louis hour, but yeah. like, was, I was a little defeated. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, hmm. Hmm. I haven't been back since. Fuck you, improv. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucked up. Um, we touched on weed a little bit, but I think there's more there. Is that weed that you have in your hand right now? Yeah, this is a, a, a rosin pen. It, oh, rosin is more intense, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's intense, just more concentrated. Rosin is just more cleaner if, you, if it's anything. Because, like, uh, so the way that they make rosin, it's a higher tier process. Mm -hmm. It's like fine wine is the best way to do it. It's like fresh squeezed juice. Okay. So what they do is they get um, fresh frozen weed, right? And you know, there's crystals at the end of the weed. Mm -hmm. And then they agitate it. Usually they just put it in a bag, like six six bags with different screens and different, uh, God, what's it called? Uh, not strength, but it, when you pull it, 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 it micron filters. Okay. Yeah, different filters. That's yeah, yeah. the word I'm looking for. Anyway, so they just put ice and they just beat shit out of it and they agitate it and they do that a bunch and they keep pulling. And then finally they get all the water out and then that, what you have is just all the crystals from the plant and then they press that and then that's what you smoke. And it's just heat huh. and pressure. It's non-solventless. So there's no like, you know, butane. There's no nothing. It's literally them just 
beating the shit out of it with ice and then heating it with uh, just hot, like just heat and pressure. Wow. Yeah. You know a lot about weed. I do. I know a lot about weed. Why? Did you study it? I was just always a big fan of weed growing up. And then my cousin grew weed and he got into a lot of trouble with my family and stuff. And then now that weed became legal, <coughs> he's got a job in legal weed. Oh, and so you get so, some information from him. But I've also just been fascinated with it, you yeah. know. And uh, like, you know, I have a friend. I have a lot of friends that are just weed journalists. I have friends that work in the industry. Yeah. I have friends that are uh, used to be, uh, you know, used to. I mean, I guess people say sell weed on the black market but really it's the gray market because it was like yeah it's it's so funny to me to be like well now it's illegal well, it was like no that was it's always been around we're just now like you know yeah so like there's a lot of like legacy farmers what they call them like people that have been doing this for years mm-hmm. now trying to make the jump into the legal but you really can't do it unless you have money yeah so now it's becoming this whole thing of like i'll a lot of the people that are jumping into weed now that are making these big corporations are all, you know, it's what we all talk about when they say like, oh, the corporations are taking over. It's like, this yeah. is actually happening in real time. Right. Because You're going to have weed at Walmart in no time. Oh, for sure. Once it's, once it goes federal, you're definitely yeah. going to be able to go. There'll be a weed aisle. I mean, sure. uh, Fireball just dropped um, their edible gummies. Um, Fireball the liquor? Yep. Jones wow. Soda just dropped an edible soda that they do now. I saw that um, on your Instagram the other day. Pabst Blue Ribbon now mm-hmm. has their own seltzer weed. Um, yeah, wow. so, yeah, they're just seltzers. They're just flavored seltzers that have a little bit of THC in them. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing like 100 milligram versions of those, but it's going to be with uh, like malt liquor brand. Because that's the thing is all these alcohol brands already have national distribution. So once it becomes federally illegal, you're going to see it everywhere. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got the uh, same guy I was talking about that used to produce this show, Nick, that he's moved to uh, Baltimore. He works for a cannabis company. Mm-hmm. They are currently buying all of their retail locations in all 50 states because yeah. they have a ton of money, but they're not allowed to open or do anything. They can't do business in any mm-hmm. other state. But when it hits, they they want the team to be able to like roll Absolutely. the doors up. Here's the product. Boom. I mean, they can't yeah. transport it across state lines yet. But And that's the thing. Is that, so since they can't transport across state lines, they have to. Each state has to have its own grow. Mm-hmm. So that sucks because it's also quality control. Yeah. All the best weeds from fucking California because of climate and everything. Um, the weed you have in Vegas is still good because indoors is a thing, but it just it costs a lot more electricity to run those fans and all these things. Like drier climate, it's a little tougher. Um, yeah. But yeah, once it becomes federally legal and you can ship everything, which is, it's just right now they want to make as much money as they can because if each state goes through the medical process mm-hmm. and goes through the licensing process and then finally becomes legal you can get so much money out of everybody before you even make it fully legal yeah what is it like like uh the pre-rolls that i get i think they're 20 30 bucks and then there's like a 12 dollar tax on yeah that. it's yeah. an insane amount of money no no so but also each city and each county is different so I think if we go to Maywood, the taxes down there are a little bit different. But if you go to like Hollywood, it's like excise tax, sales tax, California state tax. So they're getting taxed at like a 30%, 40% over alcohol and tobacco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so so nuts. It's crazy. Where's all that money going? Exactly. Again, that's the thing that. The roads still suck and there's still a ton of homeless people. And that's the thing. It was like all the money that you're supposed to be making off of us to owners is supposed to go towards the infrastructure. And it's like, where is it? And that's why you, from what my friends are saying that are in the industry and journalists, the level of corruption uh, that's happening right now in the marijuana marijuana industry is unlike anything that's ever been seen in anything. Yeah. And corruption like that happens in stock market and uh, you know, crypto everything. Yeah. But this is like, it's insane. Yeah. It's, it's just, there's a few people that are taking all of the money. Mm-hmm. They did it with the lottery too. They're yeah. Like, Let's absolutely. get lottery for everybody. Mm-hmm. It'll be good for schools and roads. Slush fund, stuff like that. Yeah. Where's all that money? Exactly. It's nowhere. Mm-hmm. And we still pay the highest, one of the highest tax rates here in California. Uh, MedBenz is companies. Uh, they do a lot of dispensaries. They've been bailed out like a bunch and they've only lost money, which is crazy to me that y- like, how do you not know how to sell weed? Like, it's just selling weed. Aren't they too big, though? Are they too... They're, they're too big. They're... they're The way they do their... Uh, they're too big. The way they do their fucking um, layouts is odd. They also don't pay people back uh, on... So, yeah. So, that's the other thing about the weed industry is... So, say that you're a grower mm-hmm. or a brand, and then I'm 
a dispensary, right? Yep. So sometimes they'll be like, here, give me your product, right? And it'll be consignment. I either pay for it all right now or you come back and I pay you what I owe you. Mm-hmm. So Madman, from what I understand, has that deal with a lot of brands. And if you're a small brand and Madman comes up to you and they're like, we'll give you uh, half a million dollars for this much product. Uh, we're going to put them in this many stores. If you're a small brand and you now have to grow all this product, box it, do all that, and give it to them, and then you're like, sweet, now I have this million-dollar deal or whatever, and then Medben's like, sorry, we can't pay it. That's just, they're taking out little fish. That's it. Yeah. That's crazy. And, like, whole brands and family businesses have just gone out of business because of that. And That's then also cool. having to deal with trying to get their money back, and then all of a sudden, Medben's such a big company, and they've got so many lawyers that they can just fucking drag it out. Yeah. Yeah. They pay their employees really well. Yeah. The retail store managers make $180,000. Yeah, which is way too much money. Yeah, they should be paying back their... People. Yeah, but I think also when you're dealing with a lot of cash like that, you have to pay your managers enough so that they don't care about stealing from you. Yeah, and the other big thing about it is like the problem on the other side when it comes to like weed people that have only sold weed and done like underground uh, shit their whole life is... When you're trying to like run a business and scale it up to a brand, that is when you actually, it sucks because you do need those kind of business savvy people. So it right. should be a good mix of people that know how to do business on the business side and then people who really know how to like grow weed and, and do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a science. It's crazy. It yeah. Is. My buddy has to like literally actively hire scientists. Yeah. That specialize in cannabis. Absolutely. Uh, there's a living soils, a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know, uh, indoor, there's outdoor, there's uh, certain growing methods. There's people that uh, started growing with different lights. Uh, yeah. There's like, uh, some people have, um, oh God, what's it called? Uh, it's when you have your own specific way, your own tech, uh, proprietary, um, yeah. like growing methods. Some people have proprietary, a lot of people have pr- proprietary strains. Mm-hmm. So another fascinating thing is there's actual breeders who you've known nothing about and people that have never been in the mainstream who still have like just plants and seeds in the fucking vault yeah and then big companies will come and they'll be like i'll pay you this much money for this kind of strain or whatever like a a special strain that you've only grown for me and given to me and then they'll do that and give them a cut for like however much the money is and then now it's up to them to grow it right and to take care of that mother plant and then they'll have that they'll only have that strain so that's when, like, when Tyson came out with his own brand, he found a dude that had already made it. Yes. And be like, I'm calling this. So there's different ways to do it. There's, like, white labeling, which is, like, a, there's a brand who will, like, grow it for you on your behalf. Yeah. And then they just kind of put it in the packaging. Uh, there's other people who just go out and source weed, which is, like, I'll go to a farmer, and then I'll be like, I'm just going to buy all this weed from you and put it in my own packaging. It's like, hey, this is, you know. Mm-hmm. The smartest people are people that uh, link up with a brand and a grower uh and like a fully integrated shop so like ice cream shop is studio city and they work with joey diaz and they make um uh, laughing gas and i think that's Mm. i'm gonna fuck up the grow i think it's lexi or alex or something like there's a specific grow that works with that dispensary and it's all like one thing Mm. so they grow a specific strain which is you know, uh, laughing gas for Joey. Yeah. And that is now their like brand for him. Mm. So they might introduce different strains through that. And then they also have another brand that they'll introduce other strains through. Did Joey take it to Jersey with him or is he just selling it here? I think he took it to Jersey with him. I know you can get it here. I think you can only get it in California for now. I think they're eventually going to do it in Jersey. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably one of the smarter plays I've seen people doing weed wise. Yeah. Do you have weed brand deals? Uh, I don't. I, I, I mean, I, I work specifically with certain weed brands because I love them so much, like Puffco and Jolly Roger mm-hmm. and all those guys are like great friends of mine. Alien Labs, Ted with those guys connected. I'm like best friends with them. Um, real close to the guys at High Times, um, uh, Punch Extracts and like Sumo Snacks. They do like edible chips. So I'll have like sp- sponsors from my podcast and they'll come out for shows. They send me stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a few brands that I like specifically fuck with that are like, I feel pretty well respected in the scene. Right. So when it, I don't want to say this disrespectfully, is your show when your show gets to the point where you can pick any sponsor you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have your list of like, oh, I'm gonna work with my homies. Yeah. Well, so far right now, that was the thing with this kind of podcast is like we 
linked up with Punch beforehand, mm -hmm. and we like what they do. Um, and ABX is also good friends of mine. We also like what they do, and they have Farmer and the Felon, and then Ted from Alien Labs is the brands that we also fuck with. So yeah, it's mostly like people that we fuck with and that we like. And also my co-host is uh, the buyer at a dispensary, so he's one of the youngest buyers at a dispensary, and he's wow. like, he's like a fucking savant when it comes to weed and stuff. He can break it down, tell you where it's from. Yeah. Lineage, he's got like a whole taste profile. So he's more of like the guy on the podcast. And recently on your Instagram, uh, it feels like, or at least in your stories, it feels like there's like, I don't know how to describe it, but like either a pipe that's new or like the oh, yeah. end of a pipe yeah, that yeah. can go in any pipe. Yeah, so Puffco came out with uh, the Puffco Peak, which is like, you know, I don't know if you ever, have you ever done dabs? No. Have you seen it? I have. It was the fucking blowtorch. And yeah. The, yeah, it's it's, it's like intimidating, one right? One little, and there's a lot going on. Yeah, and you're like, just like, ah, oh, this feels like crack. And then, yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, that's it sucks that that was the only way to like kind of smoke hash rosin, because as the way I've described, hash is like really, really good, and then you really get to ex taste all the flavors and stuff. And a lot of the hash that I described being made, like a lot of that's like 100, 150 bucks a gram. Yeah. How long does that last? I mean, depending on who you are, it can last either a day yeah. <laughs> or like a couple of days. You know? Yeah. Um, but so the Puffco Peak was the first thing. That, one of the first things they just they made that was one just looks great uh, and works well. It's an electronic dab rig. It's got a, a bubbler on it and stuff. It lights up. It's got cool connects to your phone. It's Bluetooth. It's very nice. It doesn't feel like you're doing crack. You know what I mean? Oh, is that the one that's kind of cone shaped? Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. like a beer. And then yeah. the new one they just came out with is called the Proxy and that literally just looks like an old school pipe. It's an electronic uh, dry dab pipe. Mm -hmm. And that's nice because one, it fits in anything so you can pull it out. You, there's, uh, <laughs> all right, I'll tell this. Uh, one of the guys that works there showed me a picture that they sent through like their coworkers because it was just funny. But the whole design of the thing is that you can pull it out and you can put it in a bong or you can put it in whatever because it's modular. It's like it can fit, right? Yeah, it's pretty smart. So someone had put it in like an orange juice bottle because mm -hmm. it just fit. So you could hit it. So they were just like putting it in different like bottles and what else to see what it fits. Yeah. Just because it looks ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's like the new thing that they have, and it's like really cool. It tastes delicious. Works like a vape. Works like a vape. Yeah. Very discreet. I mean, it just looks like a pipe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I love it. It's really, really good. Um, I'm very stoked with what they came out with. I'm also excited to see what they make when it comes to pipes now, because the big the big thing on it is just the actual device. Right. So the glass pipe is nothing. I mean, not that it isn't special. It's cool looking, but I've seen. There's like legit glass bros who made like a Sherlock Holmes like it pipe. There's one that made like a fucking trombone, mm -hmm. you know, that it just looks ridiculous. So, yeah, it's cool to see what pipes are going to be made from that. So that might be a whole new glass blowers extravaganza. For, Absolutely. Because yeah. there's also guys already that blow specific types for the Puffco Peak. And then mm -hmm. also you can go and, you know, when you do dabs, they have rigs, right? Those are big glass things. There's actual glass artists who like thousands of dollars for a specific rig and the way they do it um and the way that they blow the glass yeah it's insane i got super into uh, glass blowing me too i think it's episode eight with captain uh, rod um he was a glass blower uh on this and he talked about it on this show and it's there was a show on netflix where they like go through yeah and, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know there's people who aren't that great and then there's like super master glass blowers and it's just so fascinating how they blow like they just take a piece of glass yeah. and they, I mean I don't know enough about it to like fully describe it. There's a it, but. great doc called I think it's called Degenerate Art. Yeah, yeah, and they talk about that and it's a really interesting to see like traditional glass blowers and then people that blow glass that make like weed and pipes and stuff and yeah. their relationship because they they're like if you have a hole in it and you can smoke out of it that is not glass art. Oh, That's wow. kind of how they felt and then they saw yeah. what they were doing and they're like all right this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, there's I mean I've seen some pipes over the years that are like the air canal is like twisted in the middle and then it meets back mm -hmm. up and it's like oh. yeah there's a guy that i watch online his name's uh, i think it's ryan fit and there's another gentleman where he literally just makes uh different glass pieces with different functions so like a yeah. function is that thing you see where it's like a dome shape and then it's like a spinning or like a percolator or just like it looks wild so he made one big pipe that was just all of the different functions that you could do mm. on a different uh pipe so there's like recyclers which is like if you hit your bong and the water splashes back up it doesn't hit you in the mouth it just recycles back into the bong right so there's different like variations of that 
that, and you can just decide what today I want to hit a bong, tomorrow I want to yeah, do yeah, gravity, yeah. the next yeah, yeah. day. I do. Huh? We used to make uh, gravity bongs out of three liters. My my wife's dad told me recently that he used to. He was a big stoner back in the day, and he's like so straight edge now. Mm. Um, but he said back in the day they used to make it out of PVC pipe. Oh yeah, his favorite bong was a PVC like a pipe. gravity bong or yeah. like uh, but no no like a bong bong. Yeah, uh, I've been to a frat house that had um, a bowl on the bottom floor, and they drilled a hole, and you had to go upstairs, and it was a full story bong. There, I've seen an eight foot bong, and I've hit one. Well, that'll knock you out. Right? It's. Did you clear it? Yeah, and it hurt so much. Oh. I used to smoke a lot more weed when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. Um, it was hard to get weed. Yeah, back in the day, it was like, yeah, it was a whole thing. You didn't know if it was real. My yeah. first couple times, I bought fake weed. Really? Mm-hmm. Damn. I mean, I, they could see me coming, though. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was 40, Tall. 40 bucks. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'd like some of your finest marijuana cigarettes, please. And they're like, like, yeah, here's some okay, right yeah. <clears throat> Um, do you have, have you ever bought it fake on the streets? No, I mean, I mean, back in the day when it was before it was legal, absolutely. But I usually shit like that is like, you know, a guy or like there's someone you trust. You know, yeah. that's who you usually got weed from. Like it was never, it was very hard for me to like walk up to a random guy I didn't know and be like, do you have weed? You know? Yeah, like that's when you easily get scammed. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna happen. If yeah. you asked, if I just walk up to you and I don't know you and I'm like, can I buy something from you? And you're like. I'll be right back. Yeah, it's also it's so yeah. tough where it's like uh, you gotta you know you gotta find your trusted weed dealer. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because there was a guy usually in every neighborhood who's just going. He's like, I gotta pay some fucking bills, dog. Yeah, I gotta flip this weed. Yeah, it's weird that um, you ever had anybody try and like stretch their weed out like people do with coke? What do you mean, like, like add stuff to yeah. it? Yeah. No, uh, but what people will do is they'll uh, get fake mylar bags. And they'll put like toilet paper or like cotton to make it look like it's got weed in it. Mm -hmm. And they'll like sell it to you and then they'll like dip and then you'll open it and be like, what the fuck? Um, or people will sell you like, a lot of it's like moon rocks. And that's when like people try to make their own at home. And it's like, that's when it's like dangerous because it's like gross as shit. Mm -hmm. It's like covered in like whatever concentrate they think it is. You know what I mean? People oh. always worry about fentanyl, but it's like one of the main things that kept happening in like the underground black market is people would get up. Uh, pine resin mm. and they would make it look like uh regular like dabs or like concentrates wow yeah so they yeah. would hit it and it would just turn into rubber oh yeah and it was just gross it damaged your rig and stuff and people would like getting fucked up damage your rig it damaged your whole your hell whole layers i'm like yeah it'll damage your six thousand dollar rig you're like you mean your lungs I'm yeah. like, oh yeah yeah that's the too. priceless lungs that you can't replace yeah yeah Wow, six thousand dollar, and you call it a rig, so it must be you must have a setup at home. It's like, Me, no, I only fuck with the puff coats, okay. just because my you know my wife uh, is a professional, so like it's tough to be like I have a blowtorch at home, you know what I mean? Right. You know, it's it, like this is like it's easy to be like, hey, I'm hitting my pen or I'm doing right. a dab. You know, I cleaned up the house. I don't have a spot till eight. I'm literally just watching all the Mission Impossibles again, again, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like it'd be different if I was like she came home and I'm just. Torching the dab, right. playing video games, and be firing like, up the generator. Yeah, mm. like I'm gonna go do some stand up later. She'd yeah. think I'm a degenerate. Yeah, well you are. Yeah, I am. Yeah. But this is a little more. Manual. But you don't want her to know. Exactly. That's fair. Yeah, I do all my chores. She asks, uh, or not the chores. I do all the errands and the chores she needs yeah. an hour before she gets home. That's awesome. <laughs> Full procrastination till the absolutely. Last are you kidding me, dude? That's that's how I'm built too. It's like. As soon as it's the, it's like, this is due tomorrow. Like, you know. But also, here's the thing is like, if I do it that way, it is less dirty by the time she comes home. And when she walks in and I'm just like sweating, I'm like, oh, I've just been doing this all day. That's so great. And she's like, oh my God, yeah. Wow, you worked on it all day. Yeah, she's like, this motherfucker's lying. And she won't give you extra stuff. If you're like, you know what? I did that whole list in an hour. She'd be like, oh, bet. For real. Okay. hundred uh, <laughs> percent. Your list tomorrow is going to be twice yeah, yeah, as yeah. long. She's like, it took you six hours to do the laundry and take out the trash. It was like, special? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, it did. Blow up the fucking blowtorch. Hilarious. Uh, all right. We've done over an hour, so I'm going to do some lightning round questions. Oh, perfect. Um, this does say on your IMDb that you have been on the Joe Rogan experience. I have. That's How was that? Was it that was, when it was here? Yes. 2017? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was right after Rose Battle. Did you get the Rogan pop or was it not what oh, it was? Oh, absolutely I did. Yeah? Yeah, I'm sitting at 13,000 followers right now. I think I went from like three grand to 9,000, 10,000. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it was funny because I, when I was on Comedy Central, I went from like 2,000 to 3,000. Like the yeah. pop I got from Rogan and also the lifelong fans and the people that constantly keep coming to the shows. Yeah. Like that's like, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, 
That's awesome. That's fucking fast. And also, I got the pop when I was still a door guy too. So you, that was early at the career. He had you on the show as a door guy. Yeah, after roast battle. Oh, okay. Because I won roast battle won as it. a door guy. Yes. Yeah. It all makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. You won it. You won a TV show, and now he's having you on yeah, to yeah. talk about. And it. then I got past like I still from the from when I won the show to getting past was still like three years. Wow. Yeah. But there's more of a, earlier you said six weeks. There's more of a process leading up to that six weeks that they. Oh watched. yeah, that was just them watching us that time. Yeah. So I had showcased about I think three or four times before that, mm-hmm. and that's just him watching you. So they'll be like, so when it comes to like showcasing in the past, they pass a certain amount of people every year. So then it's kind of like, isn't it? No one ever tells you when it is. It's kind of like word that gets around that he's watching and that it's coming up. Mm-hmm. And then that's kind of how it was. That's so fascinating. Yeah. It's. That's- terrifying you could have your own documentary just on how you got passed or anybody yeah, yeah. that got passed um all right lightning round um what is a quick embarrassing story that's happened to you? Uh, i got pants in high school once in front of the whole <laughs> drama department it's the first thing that pops up. underwear and pants and all wow everyone saw my dick it was like one of those where oh like, no your shirt wasn't long enough no no uh, no i was like ah so then like i tried to like cover my ass but then also i realized everyone could see my dick so i covered my front and then, like i had to like choose which one i wanted to cover uh that was hilarious have you heard um jeff foxworthy's closer on his last special no it's a it's about getting locked out of his hotel room and he gets pizza boxes and he puts them in the front and back but it's 12 minutes it's it's really great the turnaround's amazing um best meal you've ever had best meal i've ever had oh man that's tough Oh man, that's so tough. Or it could just be favorite restaurant. I mean, if I had to do like favorite thing I've ever eaten, um, oh, God damn, that's so tough for me. I mean, I right now my favorite thing to eat right now is uh, College Boy steak uh, steaks, cheese steaks. College Boy, what city is La Brea and Sunset? It's here. Yeah, every Friday and Saturday they do. Uh, I think it's from like seven p.m. to like one in the morning. It's like uh, just cheese steaks, straight cheese steaks. Wow, I, I have yet to find a good cheesesteak in LA. it's so good. Yeah? And they do it like what I assume is Philadelphia style. With the Wiz? Yeah. <sighs> wow. I'm going to have to stop by there on the way. I haven't eaten yet today. Um, silliest thing that's ever happened to you uh, or hardest you've ever laughed? Silliest thing that's ever happened to me or hardest thing I've ever laughed at? Um, silliest thing. And it could be either or. It doesn't have to be both. Oh, okay. The hardest I laughed recently um, was with my wife. We were, uh, oh, yeah, this is so dumb. This is just my cat shit. Yeah, it was me and my wife. We were in the uh, apartment, and I tripped, and I fell, and I hit my hand on the uh, sliding glass, or not sliding glass, but the sliding door for the the, um, closet. Mm -hmm. But I had done it so unexpectedly, and it made such a loud sound that all of my cats freaked the fuck out because it was just unexpected that they all jumped up in place and we have hardwood floors and they started running but they all couldn't get traction so they were all three running in place so it was just so cartoonish and silly that like it was like smack and then they all were like this for like 30 (laughs) seconds and like we could not stop laughing we were dying laughing uh how long have you had your cats oh we've had our cat well we've had honey for about two years we've had our our new small cats for about a year and a half now and last question, uh, you just went on a vacation. Yes, Cabo. How was it? It was fucking amazing. It was awesome. the first time I've ever been to like an all-inclusive vacation. Oh, what'd you think? Oh, dude, it was great. Did you have the add-on restaurants at night, or was everything? Everything was included. The only restaurants we had to add on was like uh, one that was like their fine dining one, yep. and then the other ones were the ones in town. I hate that part. But I mean, other than that, bro, that was like the most we spent. And yeah. it was like, dude, it, they refilled the bar, the mini bar in your room every day. Every yep. um, they had all you can eat, like just a snack bar. So like I would call in and be like, I'd want, it was like two in the morning and I was high and I'd be like, I want a, a steak burrito. Yeah. Like I was, it was ridiculous. Her dad, by the end of it, I was ordering two entrees at some dinner places. Mm-hmm. And my wife's dad was like, all right, man, it's vacation. Yeah. I yeah. want the chicken nuggets and the burger. Yeah, one, dog. One nugget, one burger. We went sailing. I cried Swimming with fish, it was amazing. Were they big fish, like oh, dolphins? huge fish. They were like this big, no dolphins. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. They fed them bread and chips and shit. They, 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 all it was. You could tell that this ship went there all the time mm-hmm. because when they pulled up, all the fish just showed up. Yeah, and they were like starting to throw. Like I get, they love bread, which is apparently interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then like one, ducks. one specific fish in Mexico loves tortilla chips. 
Yeah, it's Hilarious. a rainbow fish, and they were just throwing tortilla chips, and it was the only one that swam out, and there'd be just a bunch of rainbow fish. It was beautiful. That's nuts, because you have to fry those. Like, yeah. That fish would never have eaten those without people figuring out how to make tortilla chips. Yeah. That's nuts. Um, Frank, thanks for coming, man. My pleasure, dude. It was so this much was fun. Awesome. I hope you come back sometime. Absolutely. Um, tell your friends. Of course. Um, and we'll see you next time. Oh, dude, thank you. You want to plug anything else before you go? Oh, uh, yeah, I have just peaked. Frank is still on Instagram. Um, I'm opening up for Polly Shore July 7th through the 17th in North and South Carolina. Please bring me your drugs. What part? I'm uh, from North Carolina. Oh, um, shit, I don't know. Okay. Oh, Greensboro? Yep. For one of them. And then, like, I don't know, the what, what, I should look. I just know I'm going with Polly. So, <laughs> all right, North Carolina peeps, check out Frank. Uh, look it up. I think there's a comedy zone I'm going to. Comedy zone. I don't know that one. Oh, okay. The only dates that I could find for you was September 16th and 17th at the Riot House in Houston. That's also one I should remember. Yep. Yep. I'm in the Riot House in Houston, yeah. September 16th and 17th. So Frank's gonna go home and add the North Carolina dates to his link tree on Instagram. I mean, I feel like if I'm opening for people, I, I don't Why know. Why not? That's true. Maddie Smith puts all her dates that she opens for her Theo on her website. Yeah, well, what's, <laughs> I was gonna make a very petty comment. <laughs> uh, I love Maddie Smith too. I was just gonna. She's the best. Yeah, yeah. I'll be opening for Maddie in uh, Minnesota the seventh, July seventh through the tenth, uh, with Chance Willie. If you want to come check me out, and uh, Frank, thanks again for coming. My pleasure, Doc. Appreciate you. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>